So imagine you're out on a big adventure ride, having a great time, you know, just enjoying yourself, and then this happens. And then, while you're picking up your bike, you notice this. And you think, okay, that looks like a broken frame. Wait, yep. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that's really broken. So, what do you do now? No, seriously, while you're watching the video, have a think about what you'd do. And before you go, make sure you post it in the comments below and I'll talk through the top three answers in my next video. But just for today, let's assume you just chose to walk however many k's back through the desert to the nearest spot of mobile reception. And while you're on your track back to the magical land of connectivity, you stumble across a time machine. A time machine that'll take you back to last week, when you were sinking beers instead of checking your bike before the big ride. And you think, hmm, maybe I should chuck on one of those Scrambler Tips videos. No. So, I'm going to tell you a bit of a story. When I was on a ride about four months ago, I put the bike on the stand and I realized it was leaning over really far. And I was like, oh, that was a bit strange. Uh, so I brought it into the garage and I put it up and I checked the kickstand and thought, oh, maybe the kickstand's bent. But then on further inspection, I realized that basically the frame had cracked the whole way through at the kickstand mounting position. So the kickstand was actually flexing and the bike was tipping this way. So it was kind of like that. Uh, and really it just, to be honest, surprised the absolute shit out of me. I was, I was not expecting that to happen to this bike and a frame crack is pretty serious. Luckily for me, I had these crash bars which mount up here and then back down here and so when I looked at it, that was the only thing holding that frame together. So it was pretty lucky uh, that I had those. Otherwise, I probably could have been stuck in the middle of nowhere with a broken frame and that is just, that's a weekend ender. That is not a good day to have. So um, what I'm gonna show you is just some things to check and make sure you check these regularly because if it's happened to mine, it could happen to yours. So. Let's get into that. So riding off road inherently comes with a lot of bumps. We like having fun and taking these on more challenging roads. And what that means is a lot more wear and tear on the bike. And it, it's just a lot more work for the bike in general. And so, there's a lot of vibration through all of these pieces, the frame, you know, like this, I, I can constantly hear this, like just bouncing up and down. And I'm actually gonna put in like a nice rubber stopper and, and kind of like a little stay so it's not rattling around, things like that. This is a five mil, five mil Allen key which you can just get in a normal Allen key as well. I just like it on a ratchet. And then this is an eight mil uh, socket on a ratchet. So I just... And then use this to undo this. And then that just comes down here. Now, on your bash plate, you've got a couple of little tabs that basically hold these tubes. I just route them properly just so they sit out the side. That's all. They're not super important. They're just overflow tubes. But you just want to make sure that they don't leak onto your bike, which I think is coolant. If your coolant reservoir boils over. So what you might be able to make out there is this big weld. Now, I've got it welded because I spoke to Triumph and they're covering it under warranty, but they can't get the part in and they can't tell me how long it's gonna be. So 
I don't want to be off the road for 12 months waiting for a piece of metal and I have a really talented friend who's great with aluminium and alloy welding so I got him to do it properly because he is actually qualified and does chassis and things like that. So I got these crash bars uh, probably 12 months ago now and my partner got them for me for my birthday, best birthday present ever because they get used a little bit, unfortunately. Most of the time when I'm standing still and off the bike and in a big rut or something like that and it just, I was just trying to get out and lost the weight of it. And Cause it's a 200 plus kilo bike. I think it's 230 kilos wet. When it goes over, it's going over. You aren't gonna be holding that thing up. So, uh, especially if you haven't got your legs over the bike, if you're standing beside the bike, it's just gonna pull you over. So I tried to soften the blow as much as I could, but uh, yeah, you'll notice a few scratches on my engine bars. Um, so what we'll go into now is uh, how I actually mounted those really quickly. So I actually mounted these onto the existing points because they're the OEM bars that you can buy from Triumph. I quite like them because what they do is when the bike does fall over, it protects your engine, which you can see I had a little bit of a bingle before I even had the bars, but it, the only things that'll touch the ground will be the crash bars and the ends of your handlebars. So you're avoiding quite a lot of damage to your engine cases and fins and tank and that sort of stuff because it's gonna be the point that touches the ground first, most of the time, unless you have a really uneven ground. Now, the mounting points are here through the engine bolt, so that is a pretty important one to make sure that you've got torqued up to the right spec. Um, over here, down, it's just in behind the gear shifter, so in here, that that is, I believe that's a 12 mil bolt, um, and that just bolts to the frame, and then, same same on the other side and that's it uh, the only thing to be careful of is there's actually a rubber piece here where the two pieces of engine mount meet together and there's a bit of slip of rubber that you pull over make sure you've got that on your crash bars before you do up all the bolts because you're not going to be able to get it on afterwards but other than that it's all actually pretty smooth sailing like two bolts either side and you're done uh, I wouldn't recommend doing both sides at once. Do one side, do it up tight, then do the other side, do it up tight, and then do these, these there's two little uh, screws in here that are, I think, a Torx bit. So do those up last, and then slide the duver over and you're done. And that is it for this week. So once again, just to reiterate, make sure you check your bike quite often, check all your mounting points, check some bolts, that sort of stuff, especially like your suspension bolts and those sorts of things. I know some people have had issues with those coming loose. That is it for this week. So uh, if you liked that, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, and please stick around next week uh, so that you can learn about, we'll see, catch up.